You're watching a clip made in 1962 to convince Americans that we needed to wear safety belts. Hello, I'm David Hoffman, independent documentary filmmaker. And before I show you this clip, which has a lot of crash tests that convinced me, let me just give a sense of that time, because most of you watching this probably grew up with safety belts. Click, you get in the car, click, your parents click. But there was a time that wasn't the case. And in fact, many people saw the government saying you had to wear a safety belt or you should wear a safety belt as intrusion, government intervention on my freedom, you know, taking it away. My wife felt that way very strongly. So the government had to convince people that safety belts made sense. And at the time, the government made movies like the one you're about to see. They don't do that anymore. And the idea of this film was to convince you showing crash tests. We all saw crash tests. They were horrible, disgusting. Who wanted that? I put a safety belt on right away. It was a click. There was no over the shoulder at that time. My wife didn't. You're imposing on my freedom. I'm not doing it until they made it to law. So take a look at Crash Test Plus and see, would this have convinced you back then? You remember how much fun you had in an amusement park when you were a kid? Well, when you're a parent, you live it all over again through the eyes of your child. That's my little girl, Nancy. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce Susie. Nancy would never forgive me. She's made Susie an important part of our family. You know how it is. When a little girl has no brothers or sisters, her doll can become pretty important. And sometimes, so help me, I almost think the girl, I mean the doll, has a personality of her own. Alice said roller coasters are all right. But she prefers riding in the family car. We were on our way to pick up Nancy. She had been with Alice's mother for a week. With everything that Nancy had to take on the plane, there just hadn't been room for a playmate the size of Susan. Then, less than a half an hour out of town... Gee, what's up? Although we were both wearing seat belts, Alice was badly shaken up. I blame myself for maybe driving a little too fast. You always feel guilty at a time like this, even when it's the other fellow's fault. I'd have to get Alice over to Dr. McAllister right away. Then we discovered something that gave us both a genuine shock. What if this had been Nancy? I examined both Mr. and Mrs. Norwood and was happy to tell them that apart from a few abrasions and shattered nerves, they had suffered no serious injury. If they hadn't been wearing their seat belts, however, the verdict would have been different, disastrously different. I thought I was through with my patients when my eyes fell on another casualty. Mr. Norwood was a bit embarrassed until I told him about my work with dolls that had survived car collisions. As a medical consultant for the Institute of Transportation and Traffic Engineering, I examined the dolls that represented children and the dummies that represented adults in the scientific collision staged by the University of California at Los Angeles.
strategically placed cameras covered everything that happened during impact. We were especially interested in what happened to children with and without belts because this subject had not been explored. But even though they were only dolls, and even though these were scientific experiments, we couldn't avoid a feeling of tension and a sense of impending tragedy. For several months, the collision experiments continued at different speeds, at different points of impact, sometimes with the passengers belted, sometimes unbelted. Speeds such as these of 30 and 40 miles an hour may be moderate by today's driving standards, but not to the motorist slammed about against glass and metal. Children should never be allowed to stand on the seat of a car. In many cases where the children were not restrained, our diagnosis of probable injuries showed that they would have been killed. Babies held on laps were thrown completely out of the car. Even in the most severe collisions, university findings showed that the three-year-olds, seated on cushions and restrained by adult belts, came through uninjured. As a result of these experiments, it was found that for one-year-olds, the anchored harness, or harness secured by passing a seatbelt strap through the loops, was the most effective means of restraining the little ones. We found that infants were safest in bassinets, with the long axis of the bassinet aligned with the longitudinal axis of the car and strapped in this position. We also found that infants or children must never be held on the lap and restrained with the adult's belt as collision forces tend to crush the child. Perhaps you think a collision can never happen to you, but the children will be safer if you admit that it could and prepare accordingly. I wish that everybody could see these scenes because I don't believe that anyone who did would ever let the children go riding unrestrained again. made up my mind to have the back seat belts installed while the car was in the shop. And we never go anywhere now that we aren't all safely belted. Oh yes, you're probably wondering about Susie. Dr. McAllister knew where to send us, and now she's as good as new. She may be only a doll, but she's never left out. And that includes a safety belt for Susie. Many people who would do anything to protect their children do nothing to save them from injury, pain, or death in the motor accidents that can happen at any time. This is a frank appeal to all mothers and fathers. Without restraints, such as safety belts, the rear seat of an automobile in itself is not adequate protection. University research shows that children who will otherwise be killed can live to prove that safety is no accident. <laughs>